Hey guys, welcome back to another Shepaya Tears video. Um, so I decided to take the face cam out for this because it was kind of taking, as I was editing, um, it was kind of taking up part of the, uh, the text when it did, like, the full, um, like, the full page text. So I decided to take it out, um, so you guys can help if you guys are reading along, you guys can see it. But, yeah. Let's get into the video. Okay, <clears throat> I may have been a bit harsh on her back there. But this isn't a bad outcome either. You think the streets would be a bit more busy in the morning, but no one ever passes by here. It's hard to get used to it if you're from the city, but I've lived in the suburbs my entire life. I like peace and quiet. Yeah, not bad. I like peace and quiet too. It's nice. It lets your mind wander. It, re it really does, you know. What the fuck was that? What was that? <laughs> okay, flashing bullshit. Let your mind wander to things you'd rather avoid. What does that mean? I'm, so, I'm still confusing who the fuck the girl was in the first episode. Mark! Huh? What was that? W what was that? Ghost. It's a ghost, Raggy! But it disappears before my eyes. Strange. She looked familiar. Meh. Just meh. Can't be that important. Girl flashes before you. You're like, eh, whatever. Pfft. Who needs women? Am I right? Oh god, I'm gonna get quoted on that, I swear to god. Two weeks later, I would look on back on that moment as the first in a series of very, very silly assumptions. Alright, so this is future Mark talking about past Mark? Mark, you're actually early. That's the dumbest voice I've ever used. A familiar voice welcomes me in from the cold. In front of me stands a young man that I've known since the beginning of high school. And, then I, and that I sometimes wish I didn't know. <clears throat> On time is more like it. We barely have five minutes until the bell. That's no an accomplishment coming from you. I like how they're drawn. Oh, fuck it. I gotta get new headphones soon as I give it out. Oh, hey. Did you bring your note for the presentation? My other friend... Oh, my other friend Lillian. Lillian's voice... Qu voices are questioned politely. Unlike a certain little sister. Er, well, Rin was on the computer until midnight. And my laptop needed recharging. And... And your house was constructed without power outlets, of course. Fine, fine, I'll print them out at lunch. Why, well, the bell in my school does not ring that long. And there goes the bell. Sigh, I can't believe this. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm actually looking forward to a boring lecture if it means I can relax. Yeah, I like boring lectures too. Just, just imagine um, all the kids sitting here. The teacher's voice drones on and on and and on. I had to click it four times there. I only know of one way to escape. Jumping out the window might have long term consequences so so I'd be content with staring through it. Ah clouds. Whenever I'm bored at school, I always look. I always like looking out at the weather and thinking about how I'd rather be anywhere but here. Although fortune has treated me with nothing but sadistic, but a sadistic little sister and a pile of unfinished homework this after this morning, so maybe I'm better off in class after all. Yeah, uh, I agree with you one hundred and ten percent. Mark. Am I hearing things? Mark! It's just like this warning. With Mortal Kombat music playing in the background this time. Is this someone's stupid idea of a prank? 
And I'm sure I'll. I'm sure it's just some kid with nothing better to do with their time. But I'm sure it's just some kid with nothing better to do with their time. But I can't forget that. All right, I know what I have to do. Pinpoint the source of the sound. I spin around and stare at my target. She's not getting away this time. Er. The cloth stares at me. Lucas turns around. I step back down. Awkwardly. Lunch. Finally. Ugh, I love lunch. No matter how many years pass, nothing beats the taste of a cold meat. Of cold meat and freedom. Mmm, <laughs> I love that cold meat and freedom. It's quiet. Lucas sighs audibly loudly. Aud sighs audibly, and I follow. I still don't get how Rin can sacrifice her lunch break to study for a test when she hardly ever studies at home. It's far from the strangest thing she's done. Point taken. Dots. Just fucking dots. So how was that game I lent you? Oh right. To be honest, I'm not really into those dating sims. They're not dating sims if you if they don't have statistics. The fire in his eye. Whatever, it doesn't matter, I'll check it out when I get time. Right now I'm busy with I was about to say schoolwork, but that but that why won't last a second. Stuff. Yeah, stuff. Mark, you do know that you do you do know what this means, don't you? I really think I can see the sunlight glint off those glasses. I can speak. This means that you have yet to experience modern Japanese visual culture in all its glory. Can you please shut up now? Surely you found yourself taking a peek at Rin's DVD collection at some point in the past 16 years. Haven't you ever felt disconnected with the path the story takes? I'll take that as a no. Protagonists always have plot armor and suspense stories. The main heroine always wins in romances. I'm not sure what type of fucking game he's playing, but it's certainly ain't one of the Sakura games. Even aside from being dumbed down by the- Okay, never mind, it was a Sakura game. By the awkward translation between two inherently different mediums. Haven't you ever felt like the story isn't working? Does it not feel like the main character is a brainless idiot? And that you could do much a much better job than him? Haven't you ever felt like giving that idiotic protag a bunch in his face and telling him to choose a shy, innocent library girl over that deceitful Onichan Chara who can't go on a date without thinking about her little brother? What? The statement may contain a slight amount of bias. <laughs> <clears throat> At any rate, there's only one solution to problems like these. You play the game. Really? I sense an evil chuckle as he finishes. Who wants to add, and soon you'll be just like me. <laughs> well, I said, I'll get to it eventually. Bitch, leave me alone. Lucas kicks up his feet. It really is a good game, though. And the school uniforms kind of resemble our own, don't you think? As much as I hate to admit it, he is right. Our school is infamous for its elaborate uniforms that don't match his academic reputation. That isn't going to make me play it any faster. They don't bother you every day until you do. Do, do you dare underestimate my persistence? The bell signals the end of lunch and we head to class. You're, you're in class! 
Okay. Just imagine oh, this is the lunchroom, I guess. Away from each other, thankfully. I guess, I mean, in some Japanese anime, you do you do eat in your classroom. Alright, I did it. It took a few years, but I did it. I made it back. And it won't be long before I talk to him again. A clock ticks in the background. As the girl gazes pensively, I don't know how to say that, out the window. I'm getting nervous just thinking about it. Nervous and a little excited. It's been so long. What do I do if he's changed? This whole plan would be pointless. I have to stay calm. I know what I'm doing, and I've thought it, I've thought it all through. Just stick with to the script. But I'm so nervous, so 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 nervous. Squat. Clouds. <laughs> I like sunsets, I really do. So do I. I could live without long walks on the beach, but sunsets, they're special. Cliché doesn't have to make things less special. Not that it matters much. Storybook romances stay in the storybooks. It's just nice to catch a glimpse of stories sometimes. Be it the MP3 shuffle guides granting divin divin divinely selected background music or a perfect twilight after a day of rain. The MP3 Shuffle Gods. Phew! Thanks again for the help. Don't worry about it. It's not like I have anything better to do with my life, you know. I slide down from the window still, but I still feel hesitant. Something about the red tan in the classroom and Lillian's smile makes it smile is discomforting. Discomforting and uncannily familiar. Does the school library always get this much work? I can see why you asked for a hand. No, the library usually maintains itself with the help of the teachers. We just have some extra things to take care of before the end of the term. Paperwork, mostly. Sounds tough, all work and no pay. I think you mean no play. Wait, you're getting paid? No, but... Well, there you go. Hey, <sighs> you win this one. I can't do a woman's voice, I'm sorry. My voice is a bit too deep to do women's voices. Anyway. I was trying to say this, this, that's, and I just sound fucking retarded. I'm not doing that. <laughs> anyway, as I was trying to say, I don't mind the extra work. We help out because we want to, right? We help out because we want to, right? Oh. Though it's nice to have an extra pair of hands from time to time, if you know what I mean. Ah. Uh, right. Besides, you always end up owing me favors. This is just one of them. <laughs> anyway, shall we head home? No, you're going home with her tonight, I see. All right. Yeah, let's go. I grab my bag and rush to hold the door. It can be nice to stay after school, can't it? On the occasion, the weather is nice today. <clears throat> I try to find something other than the weather to comment on, but it's always cold in the winter, but it feels good when you're inside. It's like looking at a snow globe. Hmm. You know, I never actually thought of it that way, yeah. Snow globes are nice, winter isn't. Er, does that make sense? Yes, it does, actually. Very good, Lillian. Very good. See, Mark agrees with me. Wait, what? Now that you're in it, I don't think it does. Yes, it does, Mark. Shut up. It made sense in my head. Don't worry about it. I know what you mean. Do you? I think. Well, what? It couldn't have been that important, right? I suppose. 
Lillian smiles warily about something and walks up ahead, frizzy hair lit by the sun. We walked alone for the next few minutes, and I tried to nonchalantly wave goodbye. I can't shake the feeling that something was off about her today. Maybe I'm imagining things, but that voice in my head, but she almost seemed as tense as me. Sigh. I better head back before Rin starts worrying. Great, more demon little sisters. I turn to walk home, but Mark. Okay, that's it. The world just isn't normal today. Mark. I'm getting to the bottom of this. Mark. Oh. <laughs> shut up. Don't shut up. I walk for a few seconds and pretend not to notice before spinning around. Who the fuck is this chick? It's a girl. She stands out, long purple hair and a red ribbon, swaying in the breeze. She reappears in the alleyway to my left and I see her lips move. Low me? Does she mean love me? What does low me mean? The minute I step towards her, she points to her right. It's the road that leads back to my school. I look back at her, or at least I would have, had she not already disappeared. That arrogant... Alright, now she's really done. Now she's really done it. I'll run through this town all night if I have to. You're messing with the wrong guy! Before I realize it, the sky darkens and the, crowd, and the clouds drift in. From time to time, I catch a glimpse of something white out of the corner of my eye. But it disappears before I can identify it. She's deliberately dashing through the side streets, and she always seems to be exactly one street ahead. I grasp, I grasp for breath as I reach the school building. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna end it here. Um, I'll pick it up next episode or on Monday. So, tune back in on Monday to see, hopefully. Who the hell this chick is and why she wanted me to follow her around.